In this video, we're going to talk about how you can connect the Rodecaster Pro, and I'll be showing you my settings on that and incorporating that with StreamYard, a user-friendly live streaming software platform. So let's look right into it. Right now you're seeing I'm logged into StreamYard and just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going, I've already created a broadcast, which I've called Roadcaster Pro Test. And as you're going through this video, I want you to listen to the quality of the audio and what you can get connecting the Roadcaster Pro to StreamYard. And so let's go into the studio and I will show you as we're entering into this kind of uh, green room, so to speak, you can see my levels are doing well. We got to be careful in StreamYard not to clip, which means the we're uh, topping out here and we'll be distorting. Hopefully I'm not doing that in this video, but I want to go over to the button I just hit there, go to this cam mic gear icon, go to audio and be sure as you have it connected USB to your computer, uh, the Rodecaster Pro is an audio interface that can be used as well. So make sure you have that chosen. And I'm looking at these meters, usually getting about two or three of those or a little bit more at times is okay. You just don't want to have it full all the time and clip. I usually leave all these things at the bottom alone. So let's go out of that and let's enter the broadcast studio. I'll add myself to the stream and you can see that there. All right, let's go. As you're listening to the audio, uh, we've made sure that things are doing well there. We could also go down to this cam mic as I'm a little bit in the way there and check it again. Okay. We're, we're in good shape. Make sure we have the Rodecaster Pro. Now let's go to the webcam. Okay. Now we're looking at the Rodecaster Pro. I have that connected via the output, audio output, USB into my computer using its audio interface. I'm on channel one. So let me show you my settings as we're in StreamYard, uh, running a virtual camera through OBS, by the way. But you can see about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about the seventh one up. You can tell that is what we call unity gain. And that's where you want to be setting. That way I can take away a little bit or add a little bit, but that way I'm on unity. So this is unity. The good thing about the roadcaster, you could have you know, other people, uh, plugged up up to four, uh, inputs, XLR, as well as a USB input, your cell directly, or to do a Bluetooth. And then you have these channel strips, uh, over here, these buttons where you could add effects. So let's go back to channel one. And you want to notice, first of all, my audio meters, which are in a, uh, hitting about ne uh, negative 15 DB. That's about where you want to be on that one. I'm going to go over here to the microphone and I'm right now using, as you can see, the Rodecaster broadcast dynamic microphone. I have that chosen. If you're not sure which one you have, you can choose between as a go back, either condenser or dynamic. If you don't know the difference, then you could Google that. But the difference is basically that when I go back, when I go to the microphone, actually right here to, let's see, level, and you have phantom power. Phantom power, if you have a condenser microphone, powers all the electronic components within the microphone, gives 48 volt phantom power. I'm using a dynamic microphone, so I don't have to engage phantom power. I'm sitting on about a level of about 35. I'm not quite in the range, but I found that it can, for some reason, be a little hot. So I, I'm on about 35. I may look at it later and regret that, but I may need to go out to 30, but 35 is pretty good. We don't want to, you know, clip. All right. Then I want to hit this button again. I'm going to go over here to audio process. And this is where the, where you really want to sound. you're going to sound your best plug and play. It's easy that if you don't know a whole lot about audio, that's a wonderful thing about the road. Procaster and the Rodecaster Pro is that I can turn processing off and this is what the microphone sounds like. Of course, it sounds pretty good on it on its own. I would need to increase the volume because I've taken off the compressor. So see, I have to come above unity and give it some more, uh, on the fader. But if I go back to the processing, I'm gonna go back to unity and turn all that on. Then all of a sudden I've got this awesome sound that you can get 
on your live streams. I mean, you're really going to stand out like this. What I like is the compressor, the high pass filter. I don't usually use the noise gate. That, that's uh, up to you because once you drop below a certain uh, decibel range, it's going to close the gate. That kind of annoys me a little bit on this device, but I mean, it's good to have, we have the big bottom, which gives me that big, bassy, boomy voice. You know, if I was to take that off, that's what it sounds like. The big bottom, turn it back on. The oral exciter is more on the top end to really give it that crispiness on the top end to give you that, to accentuate the highs. So if I turn that off, you see that probably took away, yeah, it took away a lot of the highs. I can hear that as well. And then it, when I turn it back on, it really gives me that presence. And then the compressor compresses the audio and the de-esser, which is not the best. Uh, I could go in and work on that a little bit by get it fine tuning it, but I haven't quite got to that point yet, but it is good to have that on just to kind of get those S's when we say the letter S that semblance, as we call it, the DS or takes care of that. Like I said, if you don't know a whole lot about audio, then it makes it easy with the Rodecaster Pro. You just turn on all the processing and most people are not going to know the difference and it's going to sound awesome. When it comes to the voice, you know, usually I just choose, you know, medium. If I was to go deep voice, that's what it sounds like high, but on these, I just put them on medium, the strength of my voice. I could put, you know, soft or a strong voice, uh, mine's, I guess you'd say medium works great for most voices I found out. So you have those options. You have, you know, what microphone, the audio process, and it really what sells this device. And then to be able to monitor it in real time, uh, what it sounds like as well. So if we go back, those are my settings. And if we go back uh, to the screen and we go back to StreamYard, we can see that everything is lining up and everything sounds well. I go back down to the cam. And so just kind of use that as a, as a gauge. You may find, uh, in my experience, it has been uh, sometimes a little hot. So I probably, on this one, is kind of like a test. It, everything's an experiment, audio experiment. But those are my settings. I'm going to take it over and post. I'm not going to change anything about the audio. This is the real audio in real time. What you're hearing right now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change the gain on it. I'm not going to amplify. I'm not going to take away. I'm not going to add any more process. And this is the pure, clear, real time processing. You can do a lot of things post for audio, but if you're on a live stream, you don't have that luxury. That would be the major reason that you would want this mixer is to be able to get this happening in real time through StreamYard. See the links in the description below. If you found value out of this video, please give me a like, consider subscribing for future related content. And in the meantime, this is David Toller with Supplemental Sound.